Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Today I will be talking about our working environment. I will show you how you can set it up. So first off we need to install VirtualBox. Now it doesn't matter if you're running Mac OS X, Linux or Windows you will still need to do this uh, for several reasons really. First off, first of all I mean we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff and we're gonna be doing it as root so we are we are always facing the prospect that we might break something that we might mess something up and it's just better to have that virtual machine because even if you do mess something up and even if you don't know how to fix it it doesn't really matter it is only a virtual machine there is you don't really have any data of importance on it However, if you mess something up on your main machine, that can be problematic. You, if, if you're forced to reinstall it or something of a kind, then you need to back all your data up, you need to figure out where everything is, etc. Or you can try fixing the problem, and depending on what that is, it could consume a large amount of your time. So, just take my advice for it, and go ahead and install VirtualBox. It's not that complicated. It's pretty simple. I'll show you how to do it in a minute. There is another reason why we're installing a virtual machine and that is safety. We're going to be downloading a lot of stuff from the net and even though I will be using sites that I consider to be safe and that a lot of other people consider to be safe, it is always good to have that extra layer of protection so even if something happens on your virtual machine, even if it gets compromised or something of a kind, it's fine. It's a virtual machine. No problems there. There's nothing of importance there. Your private information is not there. Your credit card is not there. Uh, there is literally nothing there aside from the tools that you are using that can be obtained from the internet anyway. So, without further ado, uh, let's just go ahead and see how VirtualBox is installed. Now, there are two ways of doing this. One is preferable over the other. So, the first method is a lot simpler. So, you can just go ahead, open up your favorite browser. Mine is Firefox. Use your favorite search engine. Type in virt VirtualBox. Virtual box. Press enter and there you go. Straight off the bat you have official site virtual box. Just gonna go ahead and open it. In the left corner it says about screenshots. There's a ton load of documentation here. Uh, for the time being there really isn't any need to go over it. Rather instead just click downloads. Excellent. So here you have a list of host machines have VirtualBox for Windows hosts, for OS X hosts, for Linux hosts, Solaris, Solaris hosts. Actually for Solaris you can just use it from the repositories immediately. But for the time being uh, we cannot use the repositories. We need to configure them in Linux and repositories in Linux are places from where you pull your software for your Linux distro. Anyway, we will need VirtualBox for Linux hosts. I have already downloaded it in order to save time in this tutorial, but you just click on it and then it pops. So you have this is these guys are amazing. They have this virtual machine manager set up for multiple Linux distributions. So you have Ubuntu, you have Debian. Not sure why they actually separated Ubuntu and Debian, but it doesn't really matter since Ubuntu is based on Debian. Pretty much everything that works in Debian will work on Ubuntu as well. You have OpenSUSE, uh, while well, we even have the Enterprise, but for the time being I am interested in Fedora. And even though Fedora 21 came out and it says here Fedora 18, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it's gonna run no problems. Anyway, right next to it you have i386 and AMD64. What these markations mean well, basically, they're just references to 32-bit and 64-bit architectures. If you do not know what your machine is, whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit, uh, well, no problems there. Just go ahead and open up your terminal, type in uname 
space dash a press enter you don't need to be root to do this you can do this as pretty much any user and you have you get a you get a listing of information here so you have Linux platform local host that's the domain you have the version of the kernel and Fedora distribution as well it's number 20 and then you have the architecture so it's x86 underline 64 there we go 64 bit architecture fantastic now that we have established that we can you can actually go ahead and click on it if you're using a 32-bit one, just click on the 32-bit one. The procedure is absolutely the same. There are literally no differences. It gives me an option to save a file. So just click Save and then click OK. That will download the file for, for, for you in the default downloads folder, unless you've configured it in a different fashion. I'm just going to go ahead and cancel it because, as I said, I've downloaded it previously in order to save some time in this tutorial. So just cancel go back to your terminal now clear the screen you will need to be root in order to do this so just type in su as enter and type in your password and of course I got my password wrong I'm, I'm quite famous for doing this I don't know why but it's fine when I forget my passwords when I forget my encryption keys that can be a bit of a problem anyway there is a tool for managing RPM packets as this is a Red Hat distro all the packets software packets for it have an extension dot RPM here let me just go ahead and show this to you I'm gonna go ahead and create a bit of a bigger zoom in so you can all see what I am doing here now I am currently using the terminal and I will give more detailed explanations uh, I will instruct you in how to use it I will explain pretty much all the commands that we will be using in great detail but for the time being just tune in and follow through so there's a command ls and then I want to go to the folder downloads home uh, chronic that's me that's uh, the username downloads and oops virtual box there we go press enter I'm just gonna go ahead and clear the screen one more time there we go got exactly the same thing but a bit better looking anyway you see this extension that I have marked it says dot RPM now dot RPM represents a type of packet that I have stated previously that is meant specifically for certain Linux distributions uh, such as Red Hat Fedora CentOS and a few others what you can do is use your default RPM software so just type in rpm space dash i dash i argument is for install and then specify the path to your packet to your package so home chronic downloads uh, virtual box and press enter from here now again uh, this this process is automated there isn't much that you need to do here maybe press yes and that's it along the way but in any case this is not the method that you should be using this is the method that I'm showing that you can use but I wouldn't advise as if you do install it like this it tends to break with newer updates so it can be a bit problematic I'll show you another method in the next tutorial where you can actually use yum which is a default packet manager in order to install this packet and then update it accordingly in any case, I bid you farewell, and I'll see you in the next tutorial where I'll pick this up.